Hi, everybody. How are you? Good morning. How are you? So I've been gone for a minute, haven't I? Well, it's not for nothing. I've been busy and I've been keeping an eye on Chantal and she really hasn't been doing very much. As a matter of fact, she disappeared for a little while. and Everybody was wondering what was going on, but I kind of knew that Chantal was still in Kuwait. Sometimes she does that. Sometimes she'll disappear and not post for a little bit just to get people talking, just to try to get extra views with her next vlog or next video or next live chat. So she finally reappeared. She posted a Ramadan vlog and it was, well, quiet. <laughs> it was quiet. Uh, she showed herself at the beach. Uh, so I want to sit here and react to the vlog with y'all, as well as show you some interesting stuff on Twitter. And some of this stuff is absolutely hilarious. You guys are going to love it. So why don't we just go straight to Twitter? Uh, like there's one clip that's absolutely hilarious. I keep watching it over and over and over again just for a laugh. Okay, so for those of you that are on Twitter, and yes, I'll call it Twitter. I'm not calling it X. It's stupid. It's ridiculous to call it X. It's the bird app. Okay. It's, it's Twitter. Uh, for those who want to join me on Twitter, it's wild girl, Sarah. All right. So this post is from milk tea notoriety services this is milk tea foodie and all of her friends. Yeah. Interesting picture foodie. Interesting picture. Just some photos of us, but there's nobody in the photo with you. So where's the, where is the us part? Um, where is it at? Uh, shouldn't you be saying just some photos of me? Because there's nobody there with you. Okay. Okay. Mo translates says pathetic, saying hi to each other in the chat while you supposedly live with each other and sitting together while a video premieres. So in love, you guys. So there's Foodie, and she's saying hi to Salah, and Salah is supposed to be right there. <laughs> and you're supposed to be living with, with your husband. You know, Chantal, I love the fact that you tell on yourself. I absolutely adore that about you. Never change. Never change that aspect of yourself. You're a liar, but there's the other side of the coin. You tell on yourself. That's why you shouldn't lie because you tell on yourself, but go ahead and keep telling on yourself saying hello to your husband that supposedly you live with. <laughs> oh no, this is from fondue Pondu. I got nothing. I just, I, I got no words. Okay. Yeah. I grew up in the eighties with Ronald McDonald and Grimace. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Uh, I will say this, though. I know that she went to the beach. Beautiful beach by her house. It's such a shame that she doesn't visit there more often. If, if I lived right across the street from a beach, you would never find me at home. Point blank, period, full stop. I would never be at the house. I would be at the beach. You know, like the phone off, who cares about the internet? I'd be at the beach. But this picture of Chantal, it it almost looks like a Photoshop picture. It does just, there's something about it. It just very looks kind of surreal. Anyway, uh, Queen of WTF says, I thought Missy Moo was done with all of this. Uh, so I guess this is Missy Moo's post saying, where is your thanks to your subscribers for reaching 100,000 subs? Why is it you never give back? You reached your goal right before Ramadan. You could have given to charity, even in tribute. Instead, you order greasy pizza. You could have at least given away a pizza prize to a handful of subs or an Amazon card to your longest supporters. Something, anything, but no. You're not even bringing entertainment. Uh, what's this other picture? I am pleased to see that without regular content, I'm still at almost 100 subs. I guess it's in reference to her channel. What? 
but we'll take it sub to sub, not sub for sub. I plan to, what? Would you like me to react to either Mr. Snowflake's foodie documentary of some of the talented animations of foodie and company? Oh, are you talking about Dank Fupa? You know, Missy Moo, it's your channel. You do what you want with it. But you really need to pick a lane, ma'am. You really need to pick a lane. Like, are you against foodie or are you for foodie? Because don't think we haven't seen your situation all up in her Twitch chat. We've seen it. We've seen you there, ma'am. Ma'am, you can't make up your mind. You don't know which lane you're in. Are you against foodie? Or are you behind the scenes of foodie? It seems like you're behind the scenes of foodie, ma'am. You're still in her back pocket. Maybe you're trying to put off appearances that you're not in her back pocket, but you are. You never stop being in her back pocket. You come out, you say a little bit of something, but it's nothing of interest. Maybe just to act like you're against her. Come on now. Pick a lane or be quiet. All right. So the angry Scott says foodie beauty totally isn't trying to prove us wrong for saying Scala is gone. Eh? Uh, DX says Chantel tells us about the importance of forgiveness and then rolls away into the sunset. What picture is this? <laughs> you know, when I saw this picture, this one right here, he's wearing the exact same shirt in this picture that he wore when he dropped her off at the airport. So is this an old picture of the two of them? I really have to ask that question. He was wearing this exact same outfit, I believe, when he dropped her off at the airport and he had this smile ear to ear. I think that was the last time that Salah really smiled that way. Is this an old picture of him? Is, is this like an old video? I don't know. But he was wearing that same outfit. <laughs> Probably the last time he's ever been happy in that outfit. <laughs> oh, goodness. Mash says, 24 hours of hard. This is alarming to say the least. Everybody's been commenting about her face. Like one side of her face is very, very swollen. I don't know if the extra swelling is because of has to do with sodium, like her sodium intake, because too much sodium will make you blow it up. But that is alarming. I've also been seriously wondering, y'all, if she hasn't found a face app or a face filter of some kind that you can just when you go live, it can work only on one side of your face. I mean, I wouldn't put it past Chantal that she has somehow sought out a filter that it can adjust to one side of the face and not the other just to get people talking. You know, just to troll people. Let me just filter down one side and not the other. I mean, that's what it kind of looks like to me. But I don't know how you would accomplish that because most face filter apps and settings, it will adjust uh both sides of your face you know to make it more symmetrical but who knows maybe she found something but if not foodie if that's your natural face that is quite alarming quite alarming but if you don't care about your health don't expect us to care okay now this is this is hilarious from Fegan. now some people in my audience you guys might be parents and have kids and you're not going to understand the language of this clip, or maybe you will, but I can understand the language, but it's hilarious because it seems like the owner of this parrot is arguing with the parrot. Maybe the parrot destroyed some, it looks like computer cables or phone cables, and the parrot is not having it. <laughs> it's like listening to a, a six-year-old argue with their parent. Let's watch. <laughs> Eu vou chamar a atenção dele. Não grita comigo, não. Não grita comigo, não. Sabe por quê, gente? Olha o que ele fez. Olha, olha. Não foi eu. Foi você. Foi você. Foi. Foi você. Foi você, sim. Não adianta. Gente. E agora? Como é que carrega celular? Não grita comigo. Não grita comigo. Olha, cara. Ô, bicudo. 
Escuta só. Eu não vou falar mais. Cuida. Ele não assume. Ele não assume. I'm not going to play the whole thing. But if y'all want to see the whole thing on my Twitter feed, go ahead and look at it. I mean, I just sat here like busting up like tears and eyes laughing about this. I, where did this parent learn this behavior? Does this woman have children? And that's, <laughs> that's where the parent learned it from. That's like a six-year-old troll in their parent. Oh, that's funny. Okay, I got to stop. I got to stop. <laughs> I can't. Oh Lord! All right, here, here's a, here's a clip from Maya time, and Hidden Truths. Uh, Hidden Truths says, "Foodie Beauty." She says this place is disgusting, so she sits herself down, and then she says, "I need to remember how I feel." This is such an odd comment she made. She needs to remember how it feels, as if she forgot. Uh, let's play the clip because I'm kind of confused about that. She thinks you can't see her. And by the way, that is not body spray that she's spraying herself with. The Beezer spray is basically like a knockoff for Breeze. It's for like fabrics, like say your couch or your car. And she's spraying herself down with it. And I'm getting flashbacks, y'all. Right, right about now, right here, I'm getting them. I remember when she used to be at the villa. And Chantal does not like to take a shower. I don't know why. Showers are great. They make you feel good. You feel clean. You feel refreshed. You feel brand new. But for some reason, she hates showers. And to compensate for not taking a shower, she would sit there and bathe herself in lotion and body sprays and body mist and cologne to cover up the BO. And it looks like she's doing it again. She's spritzing on the Febreze. And Chantal, she's not finicky when it comes to smells. So how bad was it that she had to spritz herself? How bad was it, Chantal? Hmm. Okay. Pizza's disgusting. I need to remember how I feel. I'm out of breath. I had to wrestle with the potatoes. <laughs> that was that was an odd comment. Like I, this place is disgusting. I have to remember how I feel. What? <laughs> Y'all figure it out because I can't. <laughs> I I don't understand that comment at all. What does she mean by that? Okay, this is Punch Cat. Oh oh oh! You 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 put your finger in my face. You think so? <laughs> Katie's going to get you. <laughs> Look at the kitty's giving the bombastic side eye. Ears flattened back, tail flapping. Let's go. <laughs> oh, now this is beautiful. Reclaiming my time, a prairie smoke rose. Those are lovely. Those are absolutely lovely. I wish I could have a garden and have those in my garden. Okay, so what else we got here? Oh, small silly cat. Who hurt her? I don't know, but I want to scoop her up in my hand and hold on to her. Poor baby. Somebody hold the baby. Oh, no. Miss T says, Mr. Snowflake's whiteboard, episode two will be rage inducing. So everybody's waiting for episode two for Mr. Snowflake. And I guess this is this is a screenshot from like uh, a video or something. <laughs> Here's the whiteboard. And it, it, this is just like the silent shade that Mr. Snowflake likes to throw. And he's throwing it rather well. Uh, Villa becomes biohazard. <laughs> Foodie's sympathy for a PDF file. Foodie gives false alibis for for some uh, for a blank blank. 
foodie stupidest person in the world foodie narcissist f oh no <laughs> You know, Mr. Snowflake went on record saying that the first episode was tame. Even he said so. So the second one, I guess, is not going to be so tame at all. Uh, D. Angry Scott says, when three times the number of viewers show up to watch you blank yourself with pizza, then do celebrate your channel growth. So the Let's Celebrate Live, she did 3.9K views. The Pizza Party Celebration, 12K views. You know, Foodie, you've got some very interesting subs. Very interesting. In my honest opinion, some of them are there to watch you uh, get into the ground, so to speak. They want to see you six feet under because if they didn't, they wouldn't talk about food with you at all. Even if you talk about food. So uh, there, there is some morbid people in your audience. I feel very morbid and you love the fact that these morbid people, because they are supporting what you're doing to yourself, you think that they actually care about you, but yeah, you've got some, some morbid people in your audience, ma'am. Yes, you do. Uh, Kelly says, look how big and swollen one side of her face is. You can see it even more from this angle. She's not well at all. So the left is definitely smaller than the right. Yeah, something's up with that. Something is definitely up. It's <laughs> from no cats, no life. Cats are jerks sometimes. I mean, I love my cat, but they can be jerks. There was no reason for that. That cat just got off the windowsill and chose violence. Rude. <laughs> uh, Holly Go Heavy and Dell August. Oops, so sorry. So there's, I guess, the, the screenshot. That's the whiteboard shade. <laughs> I can't wait to see the video. Foodie is going to rage. Uh, Hidden Truth says, This move to Kuwait, for whatever reason she did it, was for a bad call. She is far less mobile now that she can't drive herself by her, drive around by herself. She doesn't know where she's going and can't speak the language at all. She refuses to learn it. She's stuck and could care less. Okay, this is from Yup Yup. Thank you, Yup Yup. Uh, Yup Yup says, "Hey, foodie, these medical professionals think you are dying, mate. Are they wrong?" So I don't know. I can't give credit to whoever posted this i don't know where this is from uh but this person's comment says the following uh bang on the money i cannot diagnose but i see things in my previous post of chf uh, that's con uh, i guess congestive heart failure with renal failure is there professionally i want to look at that leg as it is not sciatica because none of the symptoms line up thank you thank you she's got liatica lie attica not sciatica because if she had sciatica she couldn't be plopping down in chairs and bending over mm -mm, nope we know she was in stage three liver disease and chf and stage four liver can actually can be present in the patient her insulin resistance is through the roof it's gone up a lot just in the past couple of months she used to be 10 point x but is not 13 point X rested. So her pancreas is just dead at this point. You could give her insulin all day, but it will not, it, it will not do anything. The facial bloating too is obviously CHF seen in a lot of patients with it. And sadly intervention did not do anything. Uh, this person's giving their opinion. Uh, so it's just an opinion. Foodies, nobody's patient except for her doctors. I just want to put that out there. A decline in bariatric patients is a massive sign of core comorbidities lining up towards failure, but it means clinically the window is closing faster. Chantal will undeniably be un, uh, not here with us by Christmas. 
because there's so many factors in play now. Almost all her readings for blood sugar suggest immediate care. Oh, oops. Her bloating and complexion are almost 100% CHF. Her ticker is dying, meaning, I guess, her heart. She has passed the point of no return. The damage is done. She is looking to have a major medical crisis within the next six months if she is lucky. Another thing that is that, that the leg back pain that Chantal mentioned could also be one of her kidneys shutting down for good, not just sciatica or whatever Chantal claimed. Apparently, this is a common thing with uh, people that are super morbidly obese. Learned a thing or two today. Look, I don't know where Chantal is health-wise. I know it's not good. And every single time she gets on camera, it just looks like she's getting worse. She looks sicker and sicker, not healthier and healthier. And she is just going ham with the food. And she won't stop. She's, she's not healthy. She needs to be locked up. She seriously needs to be locked up, in my opinion. Like forced impatient. She's a dangerous to herself. And when she gets on YouTube and does the kind of content that she does, in my opinion, she's also a danger to others because people watch her and if they have, say, problems with food, it might trigger them to, uh, you know, to have a B moment. Uh, so like, she's a danger to herself, but she's also in a way danger to others as well. That's just that's just me talking. But it, it doesn't look good. As far as her health, it does not look good. And I have to wonder if she's taken the stance of, I know my time is almost up, so I'm just going to go for it. I wonder if that is part of the attitude in play. I know that I don't have much time left, so I'm just going to eat as much as I want to eat. And I'm not even going to try to turn this thing around. So, And there's nothing that any of us can do. You know, She's got to do it because nobody else can do it for her. Uh, yup, yup says, so foodie beauty, everyday Miriam gives Salah money for groceries and he proceeds to secretly go to a food co-op, pockets most of the cash and tells her he went to a grocery store. Brilliant. That still disturbs me to hear that Chantal and Salah might be going to a food bank or something like a food bank, but clearly she's got enough money to buy food and potentially taking food away from people who honestly need it. That's just, that's revolting to me. That's horrible. This woman is, she's so obsessed with food. Not only does she have all the takeout in the world, but going to a food bank or co-op, that's kind of like a food bank. And, and that's for people that they don't have much money. And they depend on a co-op or a food bank in order to feed themselves or their families. Uh, <sighs> Food banks are not for you, Chantal, especially, especially considering the fact that the majority of what you eat is takeout. So you keep talking about cleaning out your fridge. Yes. Well, I remember the last time you had to clean out your fridge. It was because you would overbuy food. It would rot in your fridge. And then the cleaning out of the fridge was just throwing away the rotting food. And how many times have we heard about you cleaning out your fridge, you being in Kuwait? Quite a few. So that means potentially you're taking money from a uh, money. You're taking food from a food bank. You're bringing it home and it's rotting in your fridge. Why would you do that? Why take food from a food bank if you're not going to eat it? You're not going to consume it and you really don't need it. Save it for people who really do need it. Save it for them. You eat nothing but takeout. Fine. Eat your takeout. Leave food alone that should go to other people that honestly do need it because you don't. Stop being so hyper fixated on food. Stop that food hoarding. It's ridiculous. Stop wasting that healthy food. Other people need access to it. And stop getting her that healthy food, Salah. It's just going to waste. Okay, Queen of WTF says stomach bug. I'm sure that was the issue. So let's watch the clip. I don't know if I'm even going to eat because my stomach is like, I think I had some kind of like 
weird stomach flu. So she's claiming that she didn't feel good. She had some kind of stomach bug. Had nothing to do with eating two Subway sandwiches and a pizza that was half cooked. That couldn't possibly be it. That couldn't be the reason why your stomach was not feeling well. Right, Chantal? I mean, eating a pizza that the, the, the dough was a bit raw, which would make anybody feel sick. And by the way, ma'am, do you know nothing about stomach flu? With a stomach flu, you don't want to eat. You don't want to eat. You can't eat. You feel nauseous. Yet you're sitting there eating. So it can't be the stomach flu. Yeah, it had, it had, her feeling bad had nothing to do with any of this. Couldn't be the reason. Inhaling some subs. And there, there's the aforementioned pizza. I don't want to watch her eat. Yeah, like that, that, that we'll just, we'll just cut it off there. I don't want to watch her eat. Uh, Jackie Peaches, oops, oops, sorry. Jackie Peaches says, if Foodie Beauty's groceries are from a food bank, she would think nothing of letting it rot while she orders takeout simply because she can. That and she's a greedy, selfish MF. Agreed. I don't, I don't know what it is about Chantal that she feels she has to hoard food. She wants all the food. She, she wants food from the food bank, I guess. She wants her takeout. Chantal, you're one person. You don't need that much food, I promise you. And if you're not going to eat it, what's the sense in having it? Is there some kind of like inner fear that you're going to run out of food? That you, you always want something around just in case you feel a little bit of hunger? You don't need that much food. You know, what is the point of getting food from a food bank if you're not going to eat it? You're, you're taking food away from people that they actually do need it. All right. No context, humans. <laughs> this looks like Salah's gaming chair. Nobody tell Foodie about this chair. She'll actually use it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, th this is what I have. Look, look, hidden truths. For someone who was severe sciatica pain who cries daily about it, she plopped down on her chair with no problem smiling. No one with sciatica would do that. Nope. Yep, plop down the chair. You sit down or you stand up, you're, 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 you're going slow. And I mean real slow. You don't plop down like that. You wouldn't dare because that would make thunderbolts go up and down your leg and your spine. So liatica versus sciatica. Uh, oh, <laughs> baby, what were, you, what were you thinking? You tried to boop him on the ear, then you fell off the blanket. <laughs> Okay, something beautiful from Valentina. Oh, look at that house. That's gorgeous. I, I love roses. I'm moving immediately. I love that staircase. All right, let's see. What else we got here? And I love this bathroom from View Blank. Bathroom of Dreams. I, I get lost in there. Just I'm not coming out. Leave me alone. I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> All right. Flashing Pondu. We got to pull this picture up. Dang it. All right. So here's Chantal 2020. Here's some pictures of her 2022. I mean, 2020. This is her now. And she's at a lower weight than what she was. Okay, sure. Sure, Chantal. Okay. 
Uh, Jocelyn says she just sprayed her fupa balls. Two tailed caperer says, OMG, how damp and disgusting does foodie have to be to spread six pumps of furniture spray on herself at 4 30 in the morning? <laughs> Yeah, like like I said, Chantal, she can take some very strong smells. So for her to spritz herself, it must have been it must have been bad. Uh, View blank says this place. Oh, I love it. It looks like a perfect place to read a book or to hang out. Just relax. And this from Valentina. Is this an airplane? What a beautiful place to be. I love the ceiling. Okay, are we done here? Oh, uh, this is from Mo Translate saying, I'm seeing discussions about this. I thought this was seeds or just shisha tobacco. Uh, so it's been revealed that the green stuff that people saw sitting in the bowl was actually some kind of treat with sp uh, pistachios. That's all it was. It wasn't the green stuff. Okay, that's it. I think we're caught up with everything on Twitter. Sorry it took a while, but I've been gathering stuff while Foodie's been quiet. So let's just get on with the actual vlog. And I I got past the part where Salah is singing. You guys are welcome. I don't want to hear it either. <laughs> it's just like his singing is terrible. All right, let's go. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to a Ramadan vlog. You might hear some fan noise in the background. I apologize, it's quite, it's hot here. So here is a Sahur recipe I made. It is a frittata. It was actually very delicious and filling and satisfying and healthy. Hello guys, Ramadan Kareem. Welcome to the first day of Ramadan. Fasting has officially begun. It is uh, post Fajr here. And this is my new chill bab. And it's very comfortable. I love the material. Very flowy. And uh, I'm just going to show you a bit of the decorations we just did. We just did a few simple things. So here are some little living room decorations. We have some lanterns. This one sings. <laughs> Arabic treat and some mamul covered in white. You know, when Chantal did her live and this was in the background, I mean, I even said so in the chat room and I wasn't sure what this was either, but I'm like, you know, Chantal's way too obvious. She was being way too obvious with it, like making sure to have all the green stuff in the basket, in the background, directly behind her. She knows how nosy girl world is. I'm like, this is, this is way too obvious. Something is afoot. She's setting this up for a reason to get people talking. I mean, we all remember her putting condoms all over the bedroom. Like, it was so staged. So I'm like, something is afoot here. This, it looks like something, but it probably isn't something because that's way too obvious. And sure enough, it, it, it was something for attention. Chocolate, date biscuits. Oh, holy Quran. And we just put these up. Like Ramadan decoration. <laughs> All right. We also found these twinkly lights, Ramadan lights that we had from last year, if you remember. And Salah was able to fix them because they weren't working. So yay. So going out the day before Ramadan starts is probably not a good idea or you're going to encounter a lot of traffic jams. This one wasn't too, too bad, but it was still bad enough. <laughs> we were still delayed. All right, time to prepare iftar. And I'm doing this at around 3 p.m., even though iftar is at 6, because I want to make my stock for the rice from scratch. I'm making an Uzi-style rice and chicken. So I'm going to start by adding a whole chicken in a pot with some water, onion, bay leaf, and a carrot. And I'm going to let that boil down and simmer until I have a nice stock I can use for the rice. 
I'm going to top the rice with some toasted almond slivers and I've just dusted them in some cumin and a little bit of sea salt and I'm just going to toast them in the dry pan until they are. I'm sorry, Chantal. <laughs> I wouldn't trust you to cook any food for me. Not as unhygienic as you are. <laughs> no, ma'am. You're not a clean person. I wouldn't trust you with my food. Are nice and toasty. I'm adding to a pot some soaked basmati rice. I soaked it for about 30 minutes with some butter and a little bit of oil and also some turmeric to give it that yellow color. And now I'm adding the broth. Look how nice my chicken broth turned out. It smells amazing. And, you know, I usually use just those like bright yellow on cube. My cat's playing with the bag in the background. <laughs> but this looks chicken noodle soup, which I won't be having. And this is chicken uzi. And it's a flavored rice. You Lord Chantal. Stock. Why do you need that much rice? I mean, this is something that's been said, I don't know how many times. Like, how much rice for you is enough? Even if Salah is eating with you, that is still entirely too much. There's no possible way the two of you could polish that off in a day. And I know you're trying to tell everybody, oh, this is for other people. Which is strange because if it's supposed to be for more than one person, we, we're not hearing about these other people. You know, like, like I said, you tell on yourself. If there were other people, you would talk more about that, but you haven't. So even if it's you and Salah eating this, I, that's, that's too much. Too much rice. With some parsley and um, almonds. Hi there, editing Mariam here. I just wanted to add, uh, you're probably wondering how I got the chicken to be kind of, you know, well done like this. Well, I did use it in the stock, as you saw. So then it kind of like simmered and boiled. So basically, hold, wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. So you use the chicken for the stock, which means you boiled all the flavor out of the chicken. Because you're using it for the stock, right? So that chicken's not going to taste very good. And then I cut it into quarters and seasoned it again, brushed it with a little bit of olive oil, and put it into a 400 degree oven. Oh, okay. So you use the chicken to make the stock. You boiled all the flavor out of it in the water. And then you're going to stick this dried out piece of chicken in the oven and dry it out even further so it's going to be basically the consistency of le leather. Got it. Uh, for another 20, 25 minutes or so. And it turned out like this. You know what? You probably did that because when you boiled it, and I've made chicken stock, okay? When you boil chicken like that for stock, it, it can look like, like a weird grayish color. It boils all the flavor and color out of it. <laughs> so what Chantal decided to do, I'm sure, is to take that the, the, the dried out, weird colored flavored chicken and stick it in the oven, try to give it a little bit of color so it wouldn't look so bad. Nice and roasted. And some... Did you put any spices on it? Because it's going to taste horrible. Roasted chicken. We have some feta cheese sambusa. Some homemade fudge. And, and why do you need the bread? You've already got tons of rice. Why do you need the bread? And the croutons. And some yogurt. Julia, I'm going to have to pray here. <laughs> Are you making sujud? I really love our little apartment. It's not perfect. Well, what exactly would make a perfect apartment just... for you? I mean, considering how you lived in the villa and how you were living at the villa, this looks like 10 steps up. You lived at the villa. It was a much bigger place. But the fact that it was bigger, all that it meant for you was more space to make uh, box mountains and make more of a mess. 
now that you've got a smaller place, it kind of forces you to be a bit cleaner because you can't get away with just throwing things in different corners. I mean, this is a lot cleaner than what the villa was. Right, for the two of us. For you, not him. MashaAllah, I'm so grateful for everything Allah has provided us. By the way, if she had sciatica, if she had sciatica, she would not be able to do that. I'm not shaming her for prey. I'm just pointing out this woman talks about sciatica. You got sciatica pain. You cannot bend down like that. No, no way. So I don't, I don't want to hear any more about her sciatica. What happened here? Wait, wait, wait. So that was that was a quick jump cut. That was that was a bit strange. There were so many jump cuts here. Let's play that again. Allah has provided us. Okay. So she's praying. Right? And then it looks like she's talking to Salah or someone. There's no sound right here. She doesn't look happy about something. And then, and, and then that's it. And then we go directly to the beach. Really weird jump cut. You guys, there's a volleyball net here. And we have a ball. Not a volleyball, but we have a ball. So maybe we will come play ball one of these days. Hey guys, very windy, but it's like three Celsius plate right now. So it still feels pretty warm. <laughs> but just, I'm going to show you guys the beach. Look how the water is, the beautiful colors. Wow. Yeah, like I said, if if I live that close to the water, I wouldn't be home. I'd be there. I'd be spending at least a couple of hours at the beach every day. Walking along the sand, just enjoying myself. Would love it. Seeing stuff like that makes me miss Florida. I, I grew up in Tampa and I live close to Clearwater Beach. I haven't been home in years, but this makes me miss Florida because we had the palm trees <laughs> and the sand. And Chantal, you moved so close to the water and yet you, almost a year in Kuwait. You never took advantage of the fact that you were that close to the water. It, the beach can be very relaxing. It can give you a, a moment to self-reflect, to relax, to like reset your head. You never went there. And spring is going to soon become summer. And summer in Kuwait is going to get so hot. And you have a problem with getting hot. So what's going to happen? You're going to take that as a way to excuse yourself from doing anything. You're going to go, oh, it's too hot outside. I got to stay inside. Ma'am, all the excuses you come up with to not exercise, to not go outside, things are going to get far worse for you physically. You're already at a breaking point like this. Yeah, You might want to come back to Canada, you know, because being isolated is no good for you just isn't i wonder if that's a, like a shipwreck or a ship in the distance chantal you've lived there for almost a year you still don't know that ship has been there for the longest you don't know what that ship is how is she acting brand new brand new betty on the scene you know she's been to that beach before And, and there's a reason why she's at a hundred K plus 
and her videos don't get much in the way of views is because of her doing vlogs like this where she's lazy. You know, she'll put a voiceover instead of talking to the camera as the footage is going. She does like the music uh, layovers. Like right here, right now, she should be talking to the camera about her time in Kuwait, about Ramadan, about the way it makes her feel, about the teachings of the Quran, anything. But instead, you've got Salah behind her or somebody behind her. And she's just, I'm just taking a stroll, you know. <sighs> and another thing, Chantal, how in the world can you live so close to the beach? That close. Don't you have an uh, ambiance channel? How could you not go to the beach and get this kind of footage for an ambiance video? Sh the shame of it all. <laughs> You've got access to nature and you're not even making the most of it. Okay, this may be shady. I'm sorry. I have to do it. I noticed that when Chantal raised her arm, Salah, <laughs> he moved directly in front of her. Chantal, um, look, I can't say for sure, but maybe that was a sign you need to uh, bathe yourself. Like he just immediately moved to the front. <laughs> this is right near us. I can't believe it. awkward like here i am at the beach i don't know what to do like i'm here um so now what i'm just gonna sit down and and show the water behind me and i don't know what to do beyond here she's all over youtube all the time i'm sure she watches other travel channels and travel vlogs she can't pick up how they do things like talking to the camera, involving the audience, acting as if the audience was the camera. That's what the successful travel vloggers do. It, it's like you're right there with them experiencing things. It doesn't feel like this, like, okay, I'm showing the water behind me. Now what? This feels awkward. This feels very posy to me. Like she's posing for a picture. So the title of the video was Ramadan 2024. This really doesn't scream vlog revolving around Ramadan. I mean, she showed the decorations in her house and making the meal. But beyond that, it was it's mainly about her. Her going to the beach and, and posing for pictures or video moments. And by the way, Chantal, can I please correct you? You're not living in the Middle East. You are visiting. You are on a tourist visa. You're just visiting. You're not supposed to be living there. You are not a resident of Kuwait. And I don't know what's going to happen when you're... Uh, visa comes up again i suspect that you're essentially squatting in kuwait you're going to stay there as long as you can until you get caught but eventually you're going to have to leave and i'm just going to put this thought out there i can't say for sure if this is going on something keeps telling me that chantal is trying to get herself to a place physically where Maybe in her mind, she thinks that if she becomes bedbound, that Kuwait can't get rid of her. That if she's too sick to travel or to fly, they can't get rid of her. They'll be almost forced to keep her. Let me tell you something, Chantal. If you are 
in a condition where you can't fly because it might be dangerous. They'll find some other way to get you back. When you got to go, you got to go. And if you're thinking that there's going to be some kind of princess type of life being bed bound, it, it's going to be far different than what you think it is. If you're envisioning laying on a couch or laying in bed and Salah just takes care of you, he brings you food, he brings you snacks, he does everything for you, that you're going to be taken care of like a queen. It's not going to be that kind of life. So you might want to back away from that. I'm sure there's lots of people that are bed bound that wish they weren't bed bound. They would gladly go back to having their freedom and their independence. You're willingly giving yours up. If you become bed bound, you being a super, super morally obese woman, uh, over 500 pounds, it's going to take more than one person to take care of you, to help you get out of bed. If you get out of bed, to change your clothes, to bathe you, to help you go to the bathroom. You're going to need more than one person to shift you around in bed so that one person isn't going to break their back. Plus, if you become bed bound and you're not in a hospital, you're going to have to spend thousands of dollars on special equipment to help you at home, like a bed that can take all of your weight, uh, different lift bars and, and all kinds of things. Do you have that kind of money? I don't think you have that kind of money. At-home care is very expensive. Hiring people that know what they're doing, that are medical professionals, that can be expensive too. You don't have that kind of money. You know, when it comes to your health, either you pay now or you'll pay more later. So what do you want to do? You want to take care of your health or do you not want to take care of your health? That's up to you. You know what's scary? Chantal likes to use filters. And I've noticed in the past, and other people have too, that she uses a elongated filter sometimes. When you do the elongated filter where it makes you look taller, that actually helps to shave some pounds off of you to where you don't look maybe as round. So here we are seeing Chantal and Chantal, that looks so surreal. You look so surreal against the background. And I have to wonder, did, did you use an elongated filter with this? Because if you if you did, my goodness, mama, please take care of your health. Take care of your health. This was so unnecessary. Why is this? This is supposed to be a Ramadan vlog. So why are we focusing on a bug? We've seen these bugs before. We saw them when he, they went to explore that abandoned school. So why do we need to see them again? You. <laughs> it's kind of cool looking though. We've seen them before. Hey, little alien. This is a beetle. A type of beetle. This is not a beetle vlog. It's a Ramadan vlog. Stay on topic, Chantal. All right. So while I'm sitting here, I just wanted to talk to you guys a bit about, you know, what the spirit of Ramadan really is, especially for me. So Ramadan is not, not about, you know, how fancy of decorations you have or how fancy of dress you have. Um, or how big of meals you prepare. It's actually just meant to be a time of spiritual growth, of growing closer really? to Allah. And Hold on a minute. I, I'm, I'm looking for something in the preview window. So it's not about, you know, like it, it's supposed to be about a time of sharing. The, the what is this, ma'am? What's that? 
what is that? This meal, what, explain this, please. Explain that. It's not about the food, but we're going to make lots of food. Okay, whatever. Bit about, you know, what the spirit of Ramadan really is for me. So Ramadan is the world how fancy of decorations you have or how fancy of dress you have um, or how big of meals you prepare. It's but yet, even with Ramadan, you're, you're making like super huge meals. You're making sure, like this is supposed to be a vlog about Ramadan, but you're making sure to include lots and lots of food. In this vlog, not even healthy food. Even with a Ramadan vlog, I'm just going to say it. You're still catering to the feedies. This isn't a Ramadan vlog, in my opinion. This is you making the feedies happy. Showing off all the food, the tons of rice, the tons of bread. I'm noticing that Salah keeps showing full body shots of you. Something that in the past you hated him doing. Is it because the feedies are like, oh, I love the fact she's getting bigger. Yeah, we know who you're catering to. It's actually just meant to be a time of spiritual growth, of growing closer to Allah. And it's a time for reflection, a time for fasting, a time for appreciation. And it doesn't, look, it doesn't look like you're fasting. Modest in everything, in every way. And just commit yourself to Allah. Doing a lot of praying. Praying those extra prayers. And just focusing on prayer and your relationship with Allah. All that Rod really should be about. Um, you know, I know we have... You know what? My respect to those who are Muslim. The Muslim people, the Muslim faith. I don't want to hear this one talk about the Muslim people, the Muslim faith, none of that. Just based on her behavior. I don't think she should be the person talking about this when she gets on camera smoking the shisha, smoking cigarettes, cursing, raging, gossiping, committing gluttony. I don't think she's the one. I don't think so. Because it's not coming from her heart. We have like a few decorations, but we didn't go all out. We just kind of, again, I just, we just want to focus on basically what the focus of the spirit of Ramadan really. And that, I think that's really important for Ramadan. It's a time for journey. Um, so that's another thing that's very, very important during this time. So, you know what, Chantal, don't you talk about that either. Yes, Ramadan is a time for giving and for charity. I have heard that, but what kind of giving and charity are you doing if you're getting food from a food bank and you're taking food away from people that honestly need it? Isn't that the reverse of charity? When you're taking from those who need versus giving to those who need, aren't you doing the exact reverse? Ma'am, stop. You're not a giving person. You're not about acts of true, honest charity. You give only when you want something in return. The more you give, the more you expect back. You have a selfish, empty heart. Don't talk to me about charity. All right, guys. So I'm going to end the video here. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. There will be, be more to come. And I really appreciate watching. So thank you so much. And I'm Madame Kareem, to our sisters, anyone else. Have a great day. Stay blessed. Oh, Lord. How much did she have to pay him to hold her hand? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's look at the body language. There's supposed to be a couple. She's standing behind him. He's standing in front of her. 
He's he he's in he's in the front of the shot. She's behind. Like there, there's such a feeling of it's all about me talking about him. Like she's standing way back. And that's also kind of a photo trick. You know, if, if you're a bit bigger and you want to appear smaller, uh, stay up behind and you don't look quite so big. But where's the synergy of a couple here? I don't see it. And some photos of us. But where is he at? <laughs> He's not there. You all by yourself. And again, there he is. She's behind him. They're not even standing next to each other. <laughs> they do. They suck. It, and you wonder why they're not going viral. You go on TikTok looking for viral things. And even after all the viral videos you watch, you still haven't figured out how to make something go viral. There's something missing here. Quality. You're not putting out quality content. It's garbage. It's trash. It's lazy. It's boring. You still haven't figured it out. Well, you may never figure it out. Well, that's it for this react, y'all. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.